Welcome to our next video on solubility equilibrium problem solving. This is similar to the last video, but in this video we are going to be solving for a specific mass of our ionics compound. Once again, let's start off by writing out a balanced chemical equation and then creating an ice chart below it. Recall that when we're trying to solve for solubility, we're going to let x be the amount of the solute which, which can be dissolved in one liter of water or the molar solubility. Here we have a one to one to one ratio. So for every one mole of solute which dissolves in one liter of water, we produce one mole of silver ions and we produce one mole of bromide, bromide ions. And so at equilibrium, their concentrations will be X and X. Let's now solve for X using the KSP equation. Okay, so we've plugged in our variables into the KSP equation. We've rearranged the equation to solve for X. Now let's compute that value for X. Remember that X represents the molar solubility. And so here we have a molar solubility of 7.3 five times 10 to the negative seven moles per liter. What we need to do now is convert this into a mass which can be dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. I'm going to deal with this concentration conversion by treating the numerator and the denominator separately. So first I want to convert this amount in moles to a, a, a mass in grams. So mass is equal to moles times molar mass. And we're talking about the solute here, so that's going to be silver bromide. So let's solve for mass. So my concentration here is 1.36 times 10 to the negative four grams in one liter. Now I need to find out the amount that can be dissolved in 100 milliliters. So I'll convert liters to milliliters by multiplying it by a common factor here. One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. So I'll divide this value by a thousand. So 1.36 times 10 to the negative seven grams can be dissolved in 100 milliliters. When we convert these concentrations, these molar solubilities to concentrations in grams per 100 milliliters or grams per liter, we see why these ionic compounds are typically referred to as insoluble or slightly soluble compounds. This is an incredibly small amount that can be dissolved in that amount of water. If you were to do this on a practical level, it would appear to be insoluble. Nothing would appear to dissolve if you're to put any sort of um, normal amount of silver bromide in, uh, in water.